Example 3. A builder borrowed $125,000 at 9% compounded semi-annually. The loan is to be repaid with three equal payments at 12, 18, and 30 months. Determine the amount of the equal payments and the total. Let's begin by getting a couple of things out of the way. First of all, let's deal with the interest rate. In this particular case, we've got 9% compounded semi-annually. So that means that the interest rate I is going to be equal to 0.09 divided by two semi-annual periods in a year. And so we've got 4.5% per six months. So we know that when we're counting interest periods, we're going to be counting semi-annual periods. Now let's take a look at the time diagram. We've got a $125,000 debt, so we borrowed $125,000 today, and so that's going to be our debt. And we're going to be again, making payments against that debt, and we're going to separate the payments from the debt by putting them on the opposite side of our time diagram. This debt is going to be repaid with three equal payments of 12, 18, and 30 months. So at 12 months, I'm going to be making a payment and another payment again at 18 months. And I'm going to be making a third payment at 30 months. So at 12, 18, and 30 months, we're going to be making payments. And there are three equal payments, so why not use uh, the same variable? We'll just use x dollars, x dollars, and x dollars. Those are our three equal payments. Well, I know that the, each of the payments is going to be significantly more than $125,000 divided by three uh, because uh, interest, compound interest is involved. In fact, now my job for the time diagram is to select a focal date. Now, it's quite arbitrary which focal date you choose. You can choose a focal date of zero and bring everything to an equivalent value at the zero point. We could choose a focal date at 12 months, and we could bring the 125 to 12 months and bring all of the payments to the 12-month period. Or we could choose 18 months or 30 months. For the, All of the uh, different focal dates will end up with the same value for x. For the sake of um, this exercise, what we will do is we will choose a focal date of 18 months. We could have, I would have been maybe perhaps a little bit easier to choose a, a different focal date, but I just wanted to point out to you that, that you can pick your own focal date. And what you can do now is come up with an equation of value that will take everything to that focal date and um, solve for the variable. So we're going to take our first debt of $125,000 and find its equivalent value upon that focal date and make that equal to the three payments. And so starting with our payments, we're going to have our first payment of X dollars plus our second payment of X dollars on the focal date plus our third payment of X dollars. And what you're going to notice is that one payment is inflated, one payment is not and the other payment, the third payment, is deflated, whereas the debt is inflated. And now that we know what the interest rate is, we can put all three together and come up with the equation of values. And so, in order to come up with the equation of values, what we need to do is take a look at the time diagram and see how much time is involved for each of the amounts that we have to get to the focal date. The $125,000 debt is moved from 0 to 18 months, so that's a total of 18 months. And 18 months, of course, while it is a, a year and a half, we have to count number of interest periods, and the interest rate is calculated at uh, on a semi-annual basis, and so we've got to say what is 18 months in terms of semi-annual periods. In this particular case, n is equal to three semi-annual periods. The first payment of x dollars is made at 12 months, and we got to get it to a focal date of 18 months, and that's a total of six months. That six months is exactly one semi-annual period. So in this particular case, n is equal to one semi-annual period. The second payment of x dollars is not moved at all because it is on the focal date, so we don't have to inflate it or deflate it. And the third payment of x dollars needs to be discounted. It has to be deflated, and the period is 12 months. So it's 12 months ahead of schedule for the focal date, and so that's a total of two semi-annual periods, so n is equal to two semi-annual periods. Now, of course, what that means is that for the deflated amount, we're going to have to use a negative n exponent for the equation of values. So let's put these all together and come up with our equation. $125,000 
inflated at 1 plus 4.5% interest for three semi-annual periods is going to equal our three payments, the equivalent value of the three payments on the focal date. Starting with the first payment of X dollars inflated at 1 plus 4.5% per six months for one semi-annual period plus the second payment which is not inflated or deflated plus the third payment of X dollars which needs to be deflated at 1 plus 4.5% interest for negative two, two semi-annual periods. And so there is our equation of values. And so you can see that with this next screenshot, we have worked out the amounts. We've got $125,000, has an equivalent value of $142,000 at 18 months. We should store that full number in one of the memories. Probably memory one would be a good place to store it. So I'm going to make a note of that. Put that in memory one. And we've got equal to, uh, we have three variables or three three terms here with the same variable, we'll call that like terms, and we've got 1.045x, and remember that the middle term is just 1x, and it's uh, the third term is x multiplied by a factor of 0.9157, and so on. So we can use memory 2 to store that third uh, value, third coefficient, and we can add 1 to that and add 1.05 to that again, giving us a total of 2.9 607 multiplied by the factor of x. And so we've got x can be solved by dividing both sides by 2.9607. Of course, that number should be stored in, say, memory 2, the grand total of the coefficients for all of the x variables. So we've got 142,645.77 and so on divided by 2.9607 and so on. So memory one divided by memory two. And so that gives us a grand total of x is equal to 48,179 dollars and 75 cents. So each payment is going to be equal to $48,179.75. And so now we know that each of the payments, each of the three payments is equal to $48,179.75. And the last question that we have to answer is what is the total interest cost of this, of this debt? And so the total interest cost is simply the difference between the money in and the money out, and the money out is the three payments of 48179 So our three payments of $48,000 is going to be three times 48179 and $0.75, and that gives us a total money out of 144000 and five hundred and thirty nine dollars and twenty five cents so our payments are hundred and forty four thousand our debt is equal to our money in our money in is a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars and so if we borrowed a hundred and twenty five thousand dollars and we've made payments of hundred and forty four thousand dollars our total interest is the difference between the two and so the total interest is simply going to be equal to 144 minus 125. And that means that our total interest costs in this particular case are $19,539.25. So that is our total interest cost on this particular debt.